The Central Dogma of Molecular Biology The Central Dogma suggests that DNA contains the information needed to make all of our proteins, and that RNA is a messenger that carries this information to the ribosomes. This is how it works. In replication, DNA molecules are duplicated during cell division and pass on to each daughter cell. In transcription, the information in the DNA of every cell is converted into small, portable RNA messages. During translation, these messages travel from where the DNA is in the cell nucleus to the ribosomes, where they are read to make specific proteins. Proteins do not code for the production of protein, RNA, or DNA. They are involved in almost all biological activities, structural or enzymatic. The DNA structure. DNA is a molecule composed of two chains that curl around each other to form a double helix carrying the genetic instruction using the growth, development, functioning, and reproduction of all known living organisms and many viruses. There are three main components of DNA. Postpate. Postpate attached to the fifth carbon of the sugar molecule. Sugar. Sugar is a five-sided ring where one vertex is an oxygen atom. Nitrogenous base is connected to the sugar molecule at the first carbon. Discovery of the DNA structure. The famous double helix structure of DNA is also known as the Watson Crick model. After the American biologist James Watson and British physicist Francis Crick who first proposed this model. They collected and analyzed data from various researchers such as Chargaff's rule and Rosalind Franklin's X-ray crystallography. The double helix structure of the DNA was derived by interpreting the symmetric patterns. DNA replication DNA contains important genetic information that should be passed on during cell division. The cells should have a mechanism at which a copy of DNA is produced that is identical to the original DNA. This is done through replication. Replication is the process wherein DNA molecules are duplicated during cell division and passed on to each daughter cell. It happens during interphase before mitosis and meiosis take place. This is how it works. First, a representative portion of DNA which is about to undergo replication. Second, the two strands of the DNA separate because of the enzyme called helicase, which opens up the DNA molecule where the two complementary strands of the DNA are separated like unzipping a zipper, and the hydrogen bonds between the bases break. Third, Free nucle nucleotides are attracted to their complementary bases. Fourth, once the new nucleotides have lined up, they are joined together by the enzyme DNA polymerase. Last, all the nucleotides are joined to form a complete polynucleotide chain using DNA polymerase. In this way, two identical strands of DNA are formed. As each strand retains half of the original material, this method of replication is called the semi-conservative method. DNA replication is semi-conservative. One strand of daughter DNA molecules came from the original parent molecule. Transcription DNA carries the genetic information of the cell. This information is translated by the synthesizing a specific RNA. The final, mature RNA strand then leaves the nucleus. Transcription is a process of producing RNA as directed by the DNA in the nucleus. The DNA is used as a template to form a single strand mRNA, which has a base sequence complementary to that of the DNA. Step 1. 
Transcription starts when the RNA polymerase and some transcription factors attach to the promoter region, which is a region rich with adenines and thymines. The DNA helix is then unzipped, forming the transcription bubble. Step 2. Free nucleotides are incorporated in the mRNA strand with the help of RNA polymerase. Nucleotides are added from the 5 end towards the 3 end of the mRNA. The mRNA strand is complementary to the template strand. Step 3. Transcription stops when the RNA polymerase hits the terminator region. This region is rich with guanines and cytosines. Oftentimes, the mRNA forms look like hairpin structures by forming complementary hydrogen bonds to other bases in the same strand. Translation Once the mRNA is synthesized from the nucleus, it is transported to the ribosomes in the cytoplasm for protein synthesis with the help of other than coding RNAase such as RNAa and tRNA the codes in the mnra are translated translation is the synthesis of protein directed by the base sequence of mnra these proteins will carry out the operation encrypted in the DNA sequence and transcribed in the mnRNA sequence. Before we proceed to the process of translation, let me show you the genetic code for the amino acids. The following figure presents the codons that are translated into amino acids. The genetic code contains 64 codons, 61 of which encodes a specific amino acid well, three of which are stop codons. Now, let's start the process of translation. First, the initiation complex to starts to form where the mnRNA is sandwiched by the large and small ribosomal units. The complex has three slots or sites, E, P, and A, where the tRNA enters and exits. Second, the initiator tRNA binds to the P site while protein chains begins with the amino acid methionine with a codon of AUG. The tRNA that can bind to this codon has an anticodon of UAC and is linked to the amino acid methionine. Another tRNA recognizes the next codons and bring the second amino acid into the A site. The amino acid in the P site is then joined to the amino acid in the A site through chemical reaction. The ribosome then advances to the next codon and the first tRNA is released to the E site. And then the next tRNA is advances to the small and large ribosomal units. The process continues as the next codon is now exposed Another tRNA with a matching anticodon to the next codon binds to the A site. And two amino acids in the P sites bind to the new third amino acid. The ribosome continues to move along the mnRNA and new amino acids are added to the growing polypeptide chain is formed. When the ribosome hits a stop codon, a release factor will occupy the A site. This will trigger the dissociation of the initiation complex, freeing the polypeptide chain. And now, the protein synthesis is now complete and a protein is able to form in this translation.